Amen. All right, let's look at Exodus chapter number 20, verse number 12. Exodus chapter number 20, verse number 12. <clears throat> Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The title of the sermon this morning is honoring your mother, honoring your mother. Now this sermon, of course, is uh, of course in light of today being Mother's Day. We set aside here in the United States of America and other Western uh, uh, countries and nations. They set aside a day where we call that we call Mother's Day, where we honor mothers, and this is actually a biblical. Concept. Now, there's nothing wrong. The Bible actually uh, speaks to this point. There's nothing wrong with celebrating holidays. Uh, the Bible talks about holidays. It refers to it as uh, holy days. That's where our word holiday actually comes from. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. And I think that it's actually a good thing, moreover, to celebrate certain holidays, especially if these holidays are biblical and they teach us biblical principles and they give us biblical knowledge. Now, in this case, they are. this is definitely a biblical concept. The concept of honoring your mother. That is what you're supposed to do on Mother's Day. What's the purpose of Mother's Day? What is it? You're supposed to acknowledge your mother. You're supposed to, you know, recognize your mother. Focus on your mother. Give attention to your mother. But more specifically, the point of it is to honor your mother. To show honor and respect unto your mother. Now this sermon is going to be probably a lot different than other sermons that I've preached on Mother's Day um, and probably a lot of sermons that you've ever heard uh, because this sermon is going to be extremely practical. Uh, I'm not going to be necessarily honoring mothers with this uh, sermon and the reason why is because I'm going to be teaching all the children that are here and addressing all the children how to honor their mothers. So this is even, if you think of it, it's even a better sermon you know, for the mothers because it's, it's what's going to actually bring honor to the mothers. So throughout the sermon what I'm going to be doing is children pay close, close attention. All of the children pay very close attention because I'm going to be giving you ways on how you are going to or how you should honor your mother on Mother's Day. Now, of course, we could also, you know, apply this. What? What, are you, what is he doing? Sit down. Don't, don't address me again, Michaela. Sit down, Jeremiah. So, <clears throat> this is, uh, you could also, of course, you know, uh, uh, speak to those that, you know, maybe are adults that have mothers because some of these points are going to apply to it. But the majority of the sermon and the majority of the, the admonitions when we read the Bible uh, about honoring your mother or honoring your parents in general, they are spoken unto, you know, little children. Children or, 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 or people that are living with their parents. So that is how this sermon is more so going to be geared. So I'm going to be giving you four ways in which to honor your mother, to honor your mother. Now I want you to turn with me to Proverbs chapter number 31. So we already saw just by Exodus chapter number 20 that this is a biblical concept. This is something that the Bible teaches, that you should be honoring your mother. Now it's a great start that we have a day set aside that can put this in our minds, but we need to not only be honoring our mothers and children shouldn't only be honoring their mothers on Mother's Day. Uh, this, this should carry over to every day of the year. This should carry over to every day of their lives to where they are honoring their mother every day because this is a commandment by God or given to us from God to honor our fathers and to honor our mothers. So here in Proverbs chapter number 31, you can't have a Mother's Day sermon without the virtuous woman chapter. So look with me here at Proverbs chapter number 31. Verse number 10, it says this, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. <coughs> Excuse me. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. I lost my place there. What verse was I in? 16. 
16. Thank you, Carter. And buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. That was just a test to make sure which kids were paying attention there. No, I'm just kidding. Look at verse number uh, 18. She perceiveth that her merchandise uh, is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Verse number 28 I want to focus on. It says this, her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. The very first point, the very first way that I want to give to the children this morning on how they can honor their mothers on Mother's Day, but also remember, carry this through onto every day of your life because it is a commandment to honor your mother. The first way is this. To praise your mother for the good that she does. Look again at Proverbs chapter number 31, verse number 28. It says this, Her children arise up, and it says, And call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. So notice there when it says her husband also, it says, And he praiseth her. <laughs> so what are the children doing when they rise up and they call her blessed? They are praising her. Now, what does it mean to praise someone? It means to tell them that they've done a good job. It means to congratulate them or to give them glory and to tell them that, hey, you've done a great job. This is something I believe is very important. I think that children should be doing this. They need to compliment their mothers when their mothers do something good or when their mothers do something right. When children, and children we sometimes, you know, we sometimes devalue uh, the attention of children and things that they notice and things that they see. But they can notice and they can see when mommy is doing something good. And what they should do is they should pay close attention and they should look for opportunities to praise their mother. Obviously, you know, we want our kids while they're young to start trying to act, actually you know, implement things into their lives to help them to be a better Christian. It will be that much easier you know, when they're older and they'll have that you know, uh, much more you know, of the Christian virtues already accomplished and into their life. So what we want to do is as kids, children, we want to start trying to be the best Christian that we can be today, right? Don't you want to try to be the best Christian that you can be now? And, and, you know, and that will you know, have you set up for when you get into adulthood, you already know so much Bible. You already have so many things you know, from the Bible memorized. But not only that, you'll already have so many virtues in your life. You already have patience. You already have tribulation. You already have, or at least experience from tribulation. So one of the things children need to do is they need to try to actually implement these things in into their lives. So what you should do is you should look for opportunities to compliment your mother. Children, today you should watch your mother and you, could, you should see the things that she does. You should see when she's working hard. You should watch her and notice when she's doing something for you. Or maybe when you see that she's helping someone. Or maybe when you see that she accomplishes something or she achieves something. And you know what you should do? You should tell her, great job, mom. You should say, hey, mother, you've done a very good work. You've done a very good job right now. This is biblical. And the virtuous woman that was excelling the virtuous woman that was doing great things, her children were coming to her and saying, you're blessed, mother. This may sound strange to us, but this is biblical. This is what's taking place. This is what God would be, this is what would be God's will, what God would will. Children should look for opportunities to praise their mother and to say, you've done a great job, mom. You're so kind, mom. You work so hard, mother. You know, you do so much for us, mom. So you should look for opportunities to praise their mom. You can say, you're the best mom in the world. Now, obviously, this can carry over to, 
you know, the, uh, the father of, you know, uh, uh, you know, his mother's children, right? You could also be congratulating your wife. Just like it says, her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he prays of her. So it's also good for husbands to praise you know, the, the mother of, her chi of his children. Not her children, goodness sakes. His children. Uh, look at... Uh, I want you to go to Colossians chapter number 3. Colossians chapter number 3 now. Point number 2 is to thank her. And this kind of is the same thing. It's you know, a little bit synonymous with praising her, but to thank her for things that she does. When your mom gets you a meal ready, you know what you should do? When your mom prepares your food for you, what should you do? You should say, thank you, mother. Obviously, children take a lot of things for granted. Uh, just because they just feel as if, hey, this is the system, this is how it was designed, this is, you know, I'm the child, you know, they're the parents, their job is to provide for me and to take care of me. And yes, that's what God wills, but you should still thank your mother. You know why? Because there's a lot of moms out there that don't take care of their children. There's a lot of mothers out there that don't take care of their kids, just like there's a lot of fathers that don't take care of their kids. There are a lot of mothers that don't care very much about their children's well-being, their children's diet, whether or not their children are hungry, whether or not their children are living a good life or have good things or they're being taken care of. There are many mothers, millions of mothers I'm sure, throughout the world at this point that don't care whether or not their children are being fed adequately or whether or not they have a good diet or just about their well-being in general. So you know what you should do, children? You should be thankful that your mother cares for you. <clears throat> you should be thankful that your mother is taking care of you and providing food for you and making food for you and doing all these different things for you, getting your clothes for you, helping you, teaching you, all the different things that your mother does. Start paying more attention to what your mother does for you. You know what? And look for opportunities today. Do this today. Start, start doing this today. Look for opportunities to thank your mother. When your mother brings you food today, what should you do, children? What should you do? Give me an answer. What should you do, kids? Thank her. You, when she brings you food today, you should thank her for that. Right? And don't take it for granted. Give her you know, a, 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 a true thank you when she does things for you today. All right. Uh, the next point is this. <clears throat> We're in Colossians cha uh, chapter number 3. Colossians chapter number 3. Colossians chapter number 3 is children obey your parents. Children, obey your parents, but specifically, obey your mother. Obey your mother. Look at Colossians chapter number 3. I want you to look with me at verse number 20. The Bible says this, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. So I want you to notice the commandment there. Children are commanded to obey their parents. They are commanded to do what their parents tell them to do, right? That's what it means to obey your parents. And this is a way in which you can honor your mother is to obey her. That means to listen to her when she tells you to do things. You are bring, bringing honor unto your mother for a couple of different reasons when you obey her. Number one, just showing that you are in subjection to her, that shows that you respect her. You are showing honor to your mother uh, when you do what she tells you to do. When you see children that their mother is repeatedly scolding them and telling them to do things or correcting them and the children just aren't listening, how does it look from your perspective from the outside? Does it look like that, that that child looks up to or respects or thinks highly of their mother? Of course not. They treat them like they're dirt or they treat them very poorly or very badly, don't they? Right? So that is one way in which that when you obey your mother that you are bringing honor unto her. But not only that, when you obey your mother, obey your parents in general, but the subject of course right now is obeying your mother. When you obey your mother, you're bringing honor to her in the eyes of others. So it's somewhat related to the concept that I was just using a minute ago with the example. You are bringing honor unto your mother. You know, when, when a child is very well behaved, when a child is a very well behaved child, they're a good godly child, they're a very obedient child, they do what they're supposed to do and what they need to do, this brings honor unto parents and even more so it brings honor unto mothers. You know, oftentimes when you're reading throughout, you know, books of, <coughs> excuse me, the kings, the chronicles, and you're reading about the kings, when it talks about a, a particular king that lives a very sinful life, 
it will oftentimes mention his mother. And the reason why is because his mother is the one that's responsible for raising him. That is the purpose or the reason why. So it reflects onto the mother, uh, you know, much more so on how the children are behaved. Why? Because the mother's the one that's there with the children all the time. The mother is the one that has, you know, 75 to 80 percent of the influence on the children. So the father, of course, is there. The father, of course, influences the kids. He teaches the children. He does what he can for the children. But fathers are out working. Fathers are out, you know, doing work and they're gone most of the time. So the mother is the one that has the primary influence on the children. So when you see children that are very well behaved, when you see them being very good and very obedient. You know what you're doing, children? You're bringing honor unto your mother. When you're out in the grocery store and you're with your mom and someone walks by and says you have very well behaved children. You know what that is? Because of your behavior, you have now brought honor unto your mother. It's a form of the praise and the glory, except it wasn't coming from you in that situation. Honor was being brought unto your mother by you just being obedient. So notice these different ways in which you can bring honor unto your mother. Number one, praise her. Tell her when she does a good job. Tell her you, you did a great job. Tell your mother she's pretty. I'm sure she would, you know, I'm sure you believe that. And I'm sure she would, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, appreciate that or like that. You know, Carter's got a weird half smile on his face right now. I, like that makes him uncomfortable or something. Yeah, so tell your mother that she's done a good job. Tell your mother that, you know, if she's achieved something, great job. Or you're a hard worker. Or you're so kind. Or when you notice something good about your mother, <clears throat> look for ways to keep God's commandment to honor her and praise her. You should praise her. Not only that, thank her. Thank your mother for the good that she does to you the good that she does for you. All of the different things that she does in your life that, you know, a lot of moms don't do. <clears throat> and here, you know, the, the, the children are even more blessed than most children uh, because they get to have their mother staying home with them every day. So their moms are there every day, all day with them, helping them, doing things for them. Furthermore, they live, and we, you know, we all, of course, are, you know, Christians. Uh, we are conservative Christians where we live by the Bible. So the mothers that attend the church here, you know, they're striving to be that virtuous woman. You know, there's a lot of women out there that aren't. There's a lot of women out there that even if they do stay home, you know, maybe they're not as hardworking. Maybe they're lazy. Maybe they don't care as much, and they're not trying to have all these good qualities, right? So, you know, these different things are reasons to be thankful for the mother that you have. To be thankful that you have a mother. Not only could you, you know, uh, be thankful that you have, you know, a better mother than many and that your mother actually cares for you, but there's a lot of children out there that don't have a mother at all. There's a lot of children out there that may, maybe their mother died. Maybe their mother passed away and they grew up their whole lives without a mother. There's a lot of children out there that maybe just didn't have their mother in their life when they were growing up. You know, maybe she's on drugs or whatever she's doing. There's a lot of situations like that. So, everyone should be thankful for their mother. So they should thank their mother. Praise your mother, number one. Thank your mother, number two. Number three, obey your mother. Do what your mother tells you to do. In a sense, when you disobey your mother, you are disobeying God. You, when, when your mother gives you a command, you should do it. God is the one that told you to obey your mother. God is the one that gave you your mother. And when you disobey your mother and your mother says, go clean your room, and you just go do something else, you know, you're not only disobeying your mother, you're disobeying God as well. You're not only dishonoring your mother, you would be dishonoring God. So a way to honor God is to obey God, right? Well, the same thing goes for your mother. We want to bring honor to our mothers because God wants us to, right? That's the best reason. That's the number one reason why. So we need to honor our parents by obeying them. Point number four, and this is the last point. The sermon's a little bit shorter, but that's because it's just strictly a practical sermon. And this could be the best sermon of a Mother's Day sermon that you've ever heard, because I'm giving you practical reasons uh, or, or practical ways in which that you can honor your parents. Uh, <clears throat> And I'm going to break this one down in two different ways, but this is what it is overall. Point number four, the way in which to honor your mother is to take care of your mother when they cannot take care of themselves. Now I'm going to give you a couple of different examples of this. I'm going to give you two ways that you can do this. Number one, you can physically 
care for them. You can physically care for them. Now there's a lot of areas of life where this would apply. Maybe when your mother is sick. Does your mom ever get sick and she has to stay in bed? Does that ever happen, guys? I have to look at all you guys. I can barely see my, my children back there, the, the two that are back there. My wife, I think, is in the office. So, <clears throat> you, I'm sure your mom gets sick sometimes, right? You know, I know that my wife, of course, gets sick, you know, the mother of my children, and she has to stay in bed, doesn't she? You know what she needs is she, she's not able to care for herself, so she would, it would be necessary that someone else helps her and cares for for her. That is also a way that you could honor your mother by caring for her physically when she needs help, you know, in some area, right? And it may not only be that she's sick, maybe she's physically injured. Maybe there might be a time where your mother breaks her foot. Maybe there might be a time where she breaks her hand and she's not able to do all the things that she could before. She's handicapped in some way and she needs you to help her or she needs one of her children to help her. That is a way that you can honor your mother. You know what it's doing? It's showing respect to your mother. It's showing that you love your mother, you look up to her, and you want to help her with the things that she's doing, right? Uh, not only that, you could just physically try to take a load off of what she's doing, right? Whatever work she's doing. Maybe she's not injured. Maybe she's not hurt. Maybe she's not sick. Maybe she just has a lot of work to do. So you know what you could do? You, should, you could try to physically just go and, and help her take care of the load or all of the work that she has. You could take a load off of her, right? She has all these burdens. She has all these different things that she does. Look for things that your mother does every day in her routine, work that she does every day. Look for those things and pay attention. And once you see them, find some of them that you can do. Find some of those little projects or those little jobs that your mother does every day and find some that you are qualified to do, that you would be capable of doing. You know what you need to do? Go to your mommy, go to your mother and say, Mom, I would like to help you with this particular work. I would like to do this work for you every day. Now, your mother may have to stay on you after a period of time to do that, but go to your mother and say, hey, I would like to start doing this every day for you. I want to do this work. And obviously you should keep trying and striving to want to and endeavor to help your mother every day, but go tell her, hey, I want to do this work for you, and that'll take a load off of her. She wouldn't have as much work that she's doing every day. It's a way to honor your mother. It's a good way to honor your mother. <clears throat> Another time, um, you know, uh, and this applies very much so to the people in our church where you can honor your mother, is she's going to be pregnant. So she's going to have, a, you know, a baby that she's carrying, and she's growing this baby, and all of the food that she's, you know, putting into her body, it's not only going to fuel her body, but it's also going to build this baby and to feed this baby. So you know what that causes her body to do because it's using up all of this extra energy? It causes her to be very tired. It causes her to be very lethargic. So this is another reason in a time when you can strive to or try to help your mother with the workload that she has even more so. It's a very good time to honor your mother when your mother, while your mother is pregnant. Not only that, a time when she's not going to help, be able to help herself or to do a lot of the work that she normally does is maybe right after she has the baby. You could help her then. She's going to be laid up in bed, of course, so you could go and you could help her then. What are the things that your mother would do? I'm sure you could think of some of those. Well, somebody's got to be doing those things while your mom is in bed, after your mom has the baby, right? And your mom is going to have to, at that time, be tending more so to or for the newborn baby. So she's, her time is going to be occupied with something new and different than it was previously. So you know what you need to do? You need to go to your mother and try to help your mother with whatever tasks or duties that you could do for her during that period of time. And then the very last point is, and this kind of brings us full circle and it comes back to the very literal meaning oftentimes of honor in the Bible. Another way in which you can physically care for your mother is by caring for them when they are older. Now, this goes in with point number you know, two of this, a subset point of this. So, 
F number four, this is, this is way in which number four you can honor your parents is take care of your parents when they cannot care for themselves. Where, well, a, a, a very you know, obvious time when your parents are not going to be able to care for themselves and your mother is not going to be able to care for herself is when she's elderly, when she's older, right? So children in here should already understand and they should already know and be prepared to take care of their parents when they are in their old age. That is what the Bible teaches. And oftentimes, that is what the word honor means. It kind of has a mixed meaning. And this comes back to, as I said, the title of the sermon, Honoring Your Mother. Again, the word honor in the Bible, of course, means respect. Of course it means, you know, the sense of glorying and honoring in that sense, right? And bringing glory and praise to her, right? But it also has to do with taking care of someone's needs. And it's oftentimes a financial need or, or, or paying for them or just providing for them when that is needed. I'd like to show you this in 1 Timothy chapter number 5. You'll see how this is used this way. 1 Timothy chapter number 5. <clears throat> See it a couple of different times, and it's actually talking about widows. So look at 1 Timothy chapter number 5. Look with me at verse number 17 and 18 first. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. It says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially though they who labor in the word and doctrine. So notice it said, be counted worthy of double honor. Then we get to verse number 18, and it says, For, meaning because, the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his Reward. Now that is talking about finances. That is talking about money. Saying that the elder, talking about the pastor in this case, the ones that labor in the word and doctrine that they uh, you know, are worthy of being recompensed for the work that they do. And you can show very clearly that this is talking about finances by comparing the other place in which this is quoted in 1 Corinthians 9. And then also in the book of Luke when Jesus sends out his disciples, he also quotes this and he tells them they don't take anything. He's saying they're going to provide for you. Well, that's the same type of concept of when children are grown and their parents are elderly. You know what they should do? Just like Jesus said, hey, they'll provide for the disciples. You should provide for your parents. There's going to come a time when your parents may even not even be able to physically take care of themselves in their daily tasks. You know, they changed your diapers when you were a kid. Well, you might have to change their diapers. I don't know if you know about that, but that is a very you know, a, a, a serious possibility, right? You know, when you put your, your mother, depending on how, long, how old she gets, or your father in the nursing home, there are people there that are going to have to physically take care of her. They're going to have to go and bring her drinks. They're going to have to go and bring her food. They're going to have to go and you know, do all different sorts of things for her, get her mail for her, even if she is that you know, uh, uh, capable. They're going to have to do, go and do all different types of things for your mother. Now, should you put your mother in a nursing home? Of course not. That's terrible. No, you definitely shouldn't do that. They, they, you know, they care for them to only a certain degree. They don't care for them like they would care for their own mother, right? And, and there are terrible conditions that are in nursing homes. But even, even still... The Bible teaches, and we're going to look at this right now, that we as Christians, that we're commanded. I don't care what the world does. I don't care what other religions teach or just atheists, agnostics. agnostics. I don't care how United States citizens, what their you know, routine is as far as how their standard protocols, as far as how or what they do to their parents when they're older. We as Christians should you know, strive to and find out what the Bible teaches and do that. Look at what it says here in 1 Timothy chapter 5. <clears throat> Look at what it says in verse 3. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Notice the word honor there, right? It's talking about a woman that doesn't have her husband there anymore. Now what would her husband do for her? He would take care of her. He would provide for her. What does daddy do in the household, children? He's the one that would bring in the money, right? He's the one that provides and makes sure that, the, make sure that the, all the bills are paid, right? He takes care of your mother. He does all the things that he has to do for your mom. Notice what it says here. Honor widows that are widows indeed. This would be a mother that doesn't have her, her husband. Verse 4. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home. Piety is like the word pious, right? It's, it's good. To show good things at home. 
and to requite their parents. For that is good and acceptable before God. You notice what it said? To requite their parents. You know what it means to requite? It means to return to them. To recompense their parents. Now what does that mean? It means that your parents did good things for you. That's what that's saying. Your parents took care of you. Your parents provided for you. Your mother specifically is who this is speaking about. She did work for you. She took care of you. She did all different sorts of things in your life. I mean, if you were able to just jot down and have a list of all the work and all the help that your mother did for you, all the meals that your mother cooked, all the time your mother got you clothes, got your clothes ready, gave you a bath, just all the different things that your mother has done for you in your life. It'd be a pretty long list, wouldn't it? It'd be a really, really big list. How many times, you know, your mother changed your diaper? Many times, right? All different types of things. Carter thought that was funny too. All these different types of things that your mother did. Well, you know what? The Bible teaches and God teaches that when your mother gets to the age and she gets to the time in her life, and especially if she doesn't have her husband there, your father there, that you are the one, according to God, that is responsible to take care of your mother. Not a nursing home, not a stranger, not some random person, and I don't care whether you say they're more qualified you know, than me or whatever. The Bible teaches and God commands you and He knows best. He says that it's better for children to take care of their parents. He said that it's better for children to honor their mothers in this sense. And what does it mean? It means to financially take care of them, doesn't it? And you know, it, it goes on and it says, Now, she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. Uh, you know, and then if you go down to verse 8, it says, But if any provide not for his own, and specially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. Notice it says the word provide. I wanted to point that out to you. What's it talking about? It's talking about someone providing sustenance. It's talking about providing the things, just like I mentioned a moment ago, when Jesus sent out his disciples, he said, provide neither, bring neither staff, nor, you know, and he goes through a big list of things, right? All the different things that they would need, money or purse or anything like that, right? Don't bring any of that stuff. Why? Because they're going to provide for you. Well, that's the same type of concept here. You know, parents shouldn't have to worry about what's going to happen when they're in their old age. You know, children should know and understand that God commands you to take care of your mother. So, one more time, I'm going to run through all these reasons. Children, real quick, pay close, close attention one more time. Start doing these things today. Today is the first day that you, you should start doing all of the things that I'm preaching right now. All of the things. And you should be paying attention in every sermon that I preach anyways, but specifically this morning, this is a good opportunity for a practical sermon. That means something you can start doing. You can start doing it today while it's Mother's Day. But even still, you can start doing it every day going forward. Because this is something you should already be doing all the time. Number one, praise your mother. Praise your mother. Now what does it mean to praise your mother? It means to tell her that she's done a good job. It means to compliment her. As I said, you can tell her that she's pretty. You can tell her that she's doing good work. That she's a hard worker. You can tell her that she, you know, all of the different things she's accomplished. Like, look at how much you've done. Maybe if she's done something, a particular project, and she's worked on something, maybe organizing something, or maybe she's even interested in doing some sort of art, right? Once it's finished, look at it, and if you like it, say, hey, that's a good job that you've done, Mom. That's a way to praise your mother. So you should praise her. That's what Proverbs 31 teaches us. You should thank her, and that's tied in with praising her. Your mother do, does things for you all the time. Don't take those things for granted. A lot of people don't have moms. And even those that have mothers, a lot of times their mother doesn't care for them that much. And there are often times that you know, people have mothers that do care for them, but you still have the advantage over them because you have a Christian mom who keeps the commandments of God, who truly cares for you like God tells them to care for you. So you should be thankful for that and not just think, oh, my mom has to make me food. My mom has to do all these things. Right? God commands her to do that. So it's, it, it definitely is right for her to do it, but there still is a lot of people out there where their mother does not do those things for them. So be thankful and thank her for it. These are ways to honor her. Praise her. Thank her. Obey her. This is a way to honor your mother. It shows your mother that you do honor her, and that means respect her. 
Right? You're not walking all over her. You're listening to her. Don't try to get out of things when your mother commands you to do something. You shouldn't try to, oh, I don't think she's going to remember she told me to do that. She's so busy. No, you should honor her and respect her. You know, or I don't think she'll give me a spanking for that. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't matter. You should be keeping God's commandments. You should honor her. And you would be disobeying God also and dishonoring God when you dishonor your mother. Not only that, by obeying your mother, you would be bringing honor to her because many people will notice it. And other people will say, hey, wow, these are very well-behaved children. And who raises the children? You know, the majority of the time, mothers. So it brings praise and honor and glory to the mother when people look at the children and say, wow, they're very well behaved. Well, honor your mother by being well behaved, by being a good, obedient child, and that will bring honor to her. Not only that, point number four here, the last point is to take care of your mother. Take care of your mother. There are different ways to do that. You can take care of her in the sense that you can help her to do work, right? You are caring for her, thinking of her, and considering her. That's what caring means. When you, you go and help her with her workload. I'm sure she has a lot of things that she does around the house. I know my wife does. She's constantly, she has a couple of side projects, and then she has to keep up with everything she's all, already doing at the house, with just being a mom and being a wife and, and things along those lines. So look and find things, children, that you are able to do and that you, a task that you could f fulfill and that you are capable of completing, go to your mother and say, Mother, I would like to start doing this. Can you please you know, give me a tutorial? Can you please train me on how I'm supposed to do this job so that I can make sure that I do it sufficiently for you? I can do it the right way for you. That's a way to honor your mother. You're thinking about her, you're respecting her, and you're trying to take a workload off of her. Some of the older children, you know what they can do? Look for opportunities to watch the babies so that they have other things they, that they could work on. The older children that are capable of watching the younger children, they could volunteer to do that every once in a while. Physically care for them, maybe when they're hurt, maybe when they're sick. When they're pregnant, even more so look for opportunities to, take their, to, to minimize their workload so that they don't have as much work. Um, maybe, excuse me, after they've given birth, they're going to be laid up at that time in bed, right? But not only that, there's going to be a time when they will not be able to physically care for themselves at all in life. Your parents will grow old one day and they are not going to be able to walk around the same way that they do, roll over the same way that they do. You know, they're going to be restricted in many areas and they're going to need someone to take care of them. That should not be a nursing home. That should not be a stranger. That should be you. That should be their children. You know why? Because God said so. And you know what he said? He said this is good and acceptable. The Bible says it's good and acceptable in the sight of God when a child, it says, requites their parents. Your, ch your mother has done a lot of things for you. She's done a lot for you in your life. And you would never even, in the, in, the, in the last few years of her life, you would never even be able to pay her back for all that she's done for you in the you know, 18, 20 years that you've lived in her house. You wouldn't be able, your, your, your parents... You know, unless they got into a terrible accident and became handicapped or disabled, your parents are not going to be, you know, needing constant, you know, uh, uh, just uh, uh, monitoring and, and, and care for 20 years of their life, right? It would only be for a few years, so you wouldn't even be able to pay them back. So the least that you could do is care for your parents in their old age. And specifically, I'm speaking about right now, honoring your mother. So already understand and expect to do this, children, that your, children, that your, your mother is going to get old one day. You know what you should do? And oftentimes, men die before their, their mother, or before their wife, I'm sorry. Men, husbands die before their wives, right? So your mother's probably going to be left behind, you know, statistically in the United States of America without her husband. You know what she's going to be? She's going to be a widow, like it's speaking about here. For certain times of her life, that's going to be hard on her anyways. You know what you should already commit to and expect to do in your life? To take care of your parents. To take care of your mother. To take her into, into your house, care for her, pay for her, provide for her, whatever she needs throughout the day. Care for her like she cared for you. Requite your parents. Now this was not a dressed up ornament sermon at all. This is a very, a very it was a very, it was, 
strictly practical. A lot of times the sermons that I preach, only the, the conclusion is practical. But truly, these types of sermons are the most beneficial sermons. And these types of sermons are, are, are really sermons, and I know fully practical sermons are the sermons that stick in people's minds the most. And this sermon is actually more honorable to mothers than any other sermon. It's going to bring more honor to mothers than any other message or sermon or words that I could stand up here and speak. Because what my goal is and what I would desire, what God desires is for you not only to think of and honor your mother on Mother's Day, but to honor your father and your mother every day. God it is a commandment to honor your mother. That's the purpose of Mother's Day. You should bring honor to your mother today, children. But you know what you should do? And this is what I want to leave you with. You should strive after today. Do everything that I told you and start today. But you know what else you should do? You should strive to honor your mother every single day. As soon as the sermon's over, go over and praise her and thank her. and you know, Tell her what a great job she does about everything, right? You know, and, and think of some of the things. Look for something that you can do for her. Start doing these things today, but continually do these things. Honor your mother every day. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, dear Lord, for your word. Well, we thank you for our mothers, dear God, and the, the system of the family unit that you've set up. Uh, we're so thankful for everything that you've done for us in life, dear God. We ask you that you would bless us and be with us. Help us to honor our mothers the way that we should. Even us that are old and, and grown. If we need to take care of our mothers, that we will that we think of our mothers, that we praise them when we have the opportunities, and just try to requite them in any way in which we can for all the good that they've done for us. We love you so much, and just be with us, dear God. And in Jesus Christ's name, amen.